Today, we have an epic one for you. It's sci-fi particles and a creation that I've been wanting to create from the start of this channel. So let's begin. In our default scene, we're not going to delete the default cube. We're going to press S5 to scale it by five times the original size. And this is going to act as our geometry node object in which we're going to populate multiple other objects. So we have to create multiple other objects. So we'll press Shift A, Curve, Bezier Circle, and we'll just press G, X, and press Control, and just move it out to somewhere like this so that we can work on all of the objects over here. The first thing that we want to do is go to the Curve Properties down here, change the resolution to 64 so that it's perfectly smooth, go to the Geometry down here, and for the Bevel, just increase the depth to something like 0.02. And that should be all right for our first Bezier Circle. Then we can press Shift D, Z, and just press Control and move it up so that we have another copy of the Bezier Circle. Now we want to add in some type of a sphere. So we'll press Shift S and cursor to selected so that we add it here instead of the world origin and then press Shift A mesh UV sphere. Now we want them to be really small because they're just going to be particles. So we'll press S 0.05 and we have to press Control A to actually apply the scale so that when we use this as a particle, it won't be its original size and it'll actually be this new size that we just created. So we'll press G Z and grab it up and that's going to be our first particle. We can actually press GX and move it to the side because we want another particle for a different color. So we'll press Shift D X and bring it to this side. And this is our second particle. And I also want to duplicate these just so that we have more small particles. So we'll press Shift Select both of them and then Shift D Z and bring it up. These I want to be even smaller than these. So I'll go and change the transform pivot to individual origins and then I'll say S 0.5 Control A apply scale. So now we have two more that are even smaller. Now we want to add in another sphere that's going to just be a big sphere. So we'll press Shift A Mesh UV Sphere. We'll press Control 2 to give it a subdivision surface of level 2. We can go to the modifier properties over here and actually apply the modifier. And we can go to Object, Shade Smooth. Then we can scale it down by just a little bit. Let's say maybe 0 0.8 and then press G, Z and grab it up. Lastly, we want some sort of triangle. And what we'll do is we'll just press Shift A, Mesh, Circle. But before we actually do anything, we'll go down to the drop down that comes over here and change the vertices from 32 to 3. And that way we get a triangle. Now we can press G, Z and grab it up and then press tab to go into edit mode or you can use the drop down over here and change it to edge select mode by pressing this button or tapping the number two. Then we can press E to extrude and press enter so that now there's a duplicate of every face. Then we can press S to scale it down. Just press control so that it snaps to grid and we can take it to 0 0.8 and then press tab to go back into object mode. Then we can add in a solidify modifier and just increase the thickness to something that you're happy with. So I'll go with the thickness of 0 0.05 and then apply this modifier. Then we'll add in an array modifier, change the factor offset from X one to zero, and then just on the Z, make it 1.5 and increase the count to maybe three or four based on what you want. I'll stick with three for today. And then again, just apply the actual array modifier. So now we have all of our particles or objects and we'll press B for box select and select everything and then press M to actually move it to a new collection. So we'll press new collection and we'll call this collection as the particles and click OK. Now we can go ahead and apply these particles into this particular cube. Now there are many ways how we could do this, but I think the simplest is by using the power of geometry nodes. We'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two nodes, click and drag to add in a new window and we'll change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor and press N to remove the side panel. Then we can press new to add in a new geometry node tree. And again, from version 3.4 onwards, you have the distribute points and volume node. So we can just grab the group input, move it to the side and search for mesh to volume node. And we need this because we can't distribute points in a volume unless it's actually a volume. And then we can search for a distribute points in volume node and plug that in here. Now we can search for an instance on points node so that each of the points can actually get one of these six different objects that we modeled. For that, we have to actually bring in a collection info node. So we can press Shift A and search for a collection info node. And over here, we can actually select the particles collection. We have to make sure that we check separate children and reset children and plug the instances into the instant node of the instance on points node. Now for each point, we get all six of the objects. We don't want that. Hence, we're going to actually check this pick instance. And now random instances will be picked for each of the random points. The next thing that we can do is actually randomize the scale and the rotations. So to randomize 
the rotation, we'll press Shift A and search for a random value node and change it from float to vector and plug the value into the rotation. However, it's going from zero to one, which isn't even half a circle. So we can increase this to two pi, which is also called tau. So we can actually just type tau and you'll get 6.283, which is one full rotation. Although even pi would work as long as the min is negative pi. So now it's going from zero to an entire circle. And that's how the rotations have been randomized. To randomize the scale, we can actually duplicate the random value node and change it from vector to float because we don't actually want a separate number for each of the axes. We want the same number on all the axes. So we just use a float value and plug that into the scale. And we also don't want them to be this large. So we can decrease the max value to something like 0.2. Two, and there we have it. The next thing is that there are very few points. So we have to increase the density and we can do that in this distribute points and volume node by just increasing the density to something like 50. Now we have a huge number of circles, spheres and points added in. Then we can go ahead and place our camera and set up the scene. So let's select our camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press R X 90 and G X press control and just move it back. And you know, the size of the cube was 10 units. So maybe we'll move it back on not the X axis, but the Y axis by minus 10 units. And then we can press zero to actually go into the camera view. After that, we can set all of our defaults, which is a part of setting up our scene. So let's go to our render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and then go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and the end frame to 300 so that it's a 10 second long animation. Or you can make it 150 if you want it to be a five second long animation. Change the output to wherever you want it to be saved with a file format of FFmpeg video and an encoding container set from Matroska to MPEG-4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. After you rotate it on the X by 90 degrees, remember the size of the cube that was creating this was five times the default cube. And the default cube is two units on each of the axes, which means this is currently 10 units in length. So we can actually select our camera and grab it on the Y five units back to bring it to the actual start of the cube. Then on frame zero, we can press I location. We can also just increase the timeline to help see what we're doing a bit better. Then we can go to frame 150 and grab it on the Y and move it by 10 units so that it's at the perfect end of the cube and then press I location. Now by default, the interpolation is set to Bezier, which means it's going to be slow at the beginning, speed up in the middle and then slow down at the end. We don't want that. So we'll go down here, press T and change the interpolation to linear so that it becomes a perfect loop. Now you can press zero to go into the camera view and see exactly how it's going to look. And you can clearly see that these large spheres are completely blocking our view and we don't want that. So with the object selected in our geometry node tree for the distribute points and volume, we can just change the seed till we get a variation that we actually like. I also think that a lot more objects should fit within the field of view. So maybe I'll actually take this camera on frame zero and grab it on the Y by another minus 10 units and then press I on the location. After that, all we have to do is take this particular set of objects that we have and press Alt D to create a linked duplicate Then press Y and just move it by minus 10 units on this side and also take it, press Alt D Y 10, and to make it repeat, you can just press shift R and it'll repeat the action. And once you have a few of those, it'll actually look like it's going all the way to infinity. And then you can just play the animation to see what we have. The thing is at the absolute end, yes, you will be able to notice the difference, but when you actually add in some volumetrics to this, that edge will not be seen. And I guess this many instances are enough. If you're still not happy with the placement of the objects, for example, this torus is coming in and getting clipped off over here again, just change the seed and you can keep testing out different seed values until you're happy with what you have. So I think a seed value of 10 is coming out really nice for me because nothing actually interferes with the camera. And so I'm going to be going ahead with this particular variation. Once your animation is set, you can go ahead and start off with the actual materials. So the first thing you can do is change the geometry node editor to the shader editor and we can also change the viewport display by scrolling up here. If any of your options are not visible, you can actually use the scroll wheel while keeping your mouse here to view the hidden icons and then change the viewport shading to rendered so that we see what we have. And we also don't require the light. So we can just select the light from the outliner and press X delete. Or if you do want the light, you can actually press Alt G and then just G Z maybe 10 units to the top, then press Alt D Y minus 10 so that we have one for this instance. 
also alt d y 10 and shift r the same number of times as you did so that we have one bulb for each of the instances once you're happy with that go back to your camera view and then start off texturing each of these objects so how we can do that is instead of selecting objects from your viewport display you can select them from the outliner up here so first we'll go off with the bezier circle and i want this to be a greenish circle so i can go and press the new button over here and of course i can go to the material properties down here as well and i don't want any of these to have shadows so i'll change the shadow mode to none and then in the shader editor i'll delete the principal bsdf by pressing x and then searching for an emission node and plugging the emission into the surface of the material output then i can increase the strength to something like 20 just so that there's some pretty nice bloom and i can change the color to the green color that i want but i also feel like desaturating this makes it look a lot better because it just makes it feel like it's a lot brighter than it actually is so i'm going to change the saturation to something like 0.96 so that just makes it look a little brighter in my opinion i'll also change the material name over here to glow green then i can choose bezier circle 001 and then instead of creating a new material i can just choose material glow green press this button to duplicate it so that it's its own user and then change the name from glow green to glow blue and then change the hue till it becomes the bluish color that i want so i think i'm gonna go with a hue of 0.6 and that's gonna be my color now i feel like the bloom is a little too much so down in my render properties under the bloom i'm just gonna change the intensity from 0.5 to 0.02 and that should be a lot better for my scene next up for the circle i'm gonna go back to the materials add in a new material i'm gonna delete the principal bsdf and i'm gonna search for a glossy bsdf and plug that into the surface now instead of reducing the roughness all the way to zero i'm just going to change it to a value of 0.4 and i'm going to change the color all the way to white after that i'm going to choose sphere and then just give it a new material we'll call this spheres underscore green delete the principal bsdf search for an emission node and you could plug that in or instead of adding in a new material for the sphere again use glow green and for sphere 001 which is the other tiny particles we'll go ahead and use glow blue for the even smaller spheres that we had which was spheres 002 and 003 remember you can name these appropriately to help you remember what you're doing but i'll go ahead and again give it glow blue and glow green now sphere 004 is the large ones i'll rename that to large sphere for these i'm going to choose the same material that i gave the triangles make it its own user and all i'm going to do is actually reduce the value so that it becomes a lot darker so a little bit more blackish and i'll also reduce the roughness to maybe 0 0.3 so that's a lot more reflective after that we can go from object to world and then play around with the world nodes so firstly the background color i'm going to make it completely black so that's dark and i'm also going to select my camera go down to the viewport display and change passport out all the way to one so that nothing outside my camera can be seen after that i'm going to search for a volume scatter node i'm going to change the density to 0.2 and then plug this into the volume of the world output now i could also change the color and make it a lot darker or even black if i don't want it to be seen that much because right now it's actually refracting the light from the four light particles that we created you can actually select the light and remove volume all the way to zero as well similarly if you don't want the bright spots on these reflective objects you can reduce the specular to zero as well or just have it really small so that the reflections are present but not too prominent so maybe something like 0 0.1 or 0 depending on what you want now what you have to do is just make sure that the density is high enough such that on frame 150 the places that are too far behind are completely cut off and cannot be seen so that when you go back to frame zero it looks like it's the exact same so maybe i'll increase the density to 0 0.3 so that's actually all there is to animating this particular scene another thing that you could do is actually enable depth of field so to do that if this is your scene right now you can select your camera from the collection and just go down and check the option that says depth of field when you expand it you can actually choose to focus on an object but we don't want that since we're moving through a specific field by default the focus distance is 10 meters and the f-stop is 2.8 
Now that might be good enough for you. However, what I'd like to do is just decrease the f-stop all the way to 0.1 so that everything gets very blurred out. Remember, the lower the value for the f-stop, the more will be the actual depth of field blurriness. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and just change your focus distance until you clearly see an object which should be in focus is very sharply in focus. So right now, at a focus distance of about seven, I can see that this triangle is in focus, which I think is a pretty decent focus length. Once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and just start increasing f-stop till I get the appropriate amount of depth of field. So I think for this scene, I'll probably be using an f-stop of 0.8 so that it's not completely wildly blown out of proportion, but you can see the difference with it off and with it on. It just adds a little bit of bloodiness and I think that's really cool. Maybe an f-stop of 0.6 is what I'll be using. So you can just check and decheck to see what you like and that's what I'll be using. Hopefully you learned something in that video and you can apply this with different objects. It doesn't have to be these circles, spheres, and triangles. It could be anything and you'd get amazing results. You could create different boxes of different holiday themed objects as well and just have fun with this. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please let me know in the comments. If you've actually stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I will respond to every single comment that comes in for as long as I possibly can. I'm releasing videos every single day. So until the next video comes out, don't forget to stay creative.